now the French tyre maker Michelin has missed expectations with a 70% drop in net profit for 2009. The company was hit by a 10% fall in sales and 412 million euros of restructuring costs too. The low cost of raw materials helped the company last year but speaking earlier with CNBC, the CFO of that business said that they may not continue into 2010. To be very reasonable, the visibility is extremely low because all that will depend on the strength of the economic growth in the coming months. And uh, honestly, today, uh, nobody is really able to assess it properly. So the easiest way to do is to think that we would have the same level as we have today throughout the year, which would have a very simple consequence in, in, our, in our accounts. Uh, it means that we would have the same impact uh, the negative impact uh, that we had when it was positive impact in 2009. In other words, it would, in, 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 in simple terms, um, to totally offset uh, the advantage that we had uh, experienced in 2009, 2010. Are you confident that you will be able to reflect these extra costs on your selling prices? Well, we certainly uh, wish to do that. Uh, it is extremely important for, for Michelin to, to be able to maintain its margins. It's, it's a matter of, of uh, long-term, uh, I wouldn't say survival, but, but uh, in other words, long-term long sustainability. Uh, we have been doing that for the past years, as you know, as leaders of the industry uh, since 2003. And the global impact in our accounts has uh, been in the order of magnitude of 3 billion euros. Can you imagine? So, so w if we had not done that, I mean, can you imagine where we would be today? So we need to pr proceed and go further. And if we are impacted by more severe costs, we need to translate that in our prices. We have announced, by the way, some price increases already in North America and in Europe. And today we have announced uh, two new uh, increases in Europe, in, in um, passenger car business and in truck business also. That will take place during the first half. What about the market in 2010? Renault is expecting a 10% decrease of the European market, Peugeot a 9%. What's your forecast? Well, the, the, the Renault, Peugeot and the others are a much better place than I am to make some forecasts on the automotive business. So I would let them say what they think because they give us the visibility. I mean, we, we, we cannot uh, really have some precise uh, thinking about that. The only thing I need to tell you there is that we will need to adapt um, and, and we will be as reactive as we can. Uh, I think we have proved in 2009 that we were able to uh, proceed in an incredibly volatile environment, um, not only with the OEs, which is the original equipment, which is many car manufacturers, but also in the replacement market, which, by the way, don't forget, is 70 to 75 percent of our business. So we will have to adapt and to be reactive. That's the only key. Do you think that the crisis will lead to further concentration in that sector, which is already uh, very much concentrated? Well, it's very concentrated and, and not really. I mean, if you look at what happened in the past years, of course, you've got big players, but you've got a, a huge bunch of new players that have appeared in the market in the past 10 years. In China, in, in Korea, in, in uh, in, in Asia in general, also in India. And, and so, and so you, you have to understand that th 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 there has been a structural move in the past years. Many, many competitors rising in, in the world, uh, attracted, I would say, by, by rising demand, which is quite obvious, notably in Asia, where, where growth is, uh, is, is tremendous. So um, in that way, we can imagine some concentration going further, uh, notably in Asia. I would say. And if there is one region where this could happen, uh, I would say that it's in Asia and probably in China.